again um, after another little break. Uh, hello to all my new subscribers. I've noticed that there's uh, quite a few more that have come on board actually, uh, which is really encouraging. Um, hopefully I'll keep you entertained. If any of you have been looking at my Facebook page, then you'll notice I've been in posting some interesting pictures of uh, stuff I've got coming up for review. I see trouble ahead. But I'm not going to talk about that at the moment. Today, I'm going to give my comprehensive DIY e-liquid mixing guide. Um, and I wanted to make one video that covered everything. So if you've never mixed before, or if you've been mixing for a long time, hopefully there's stuff that's in this video that um, that you'll find useful that actually makes your life a little bit easier. Um, so I'm going to cover everything from the equipment you need, the diluents that are used, to the nicotine bases that are available, to the flavorings that you can get, um, to how to steep properly and how you can speed up steeping without degrading the liquid. Um, so everything. I'm also going to cover additives like Vape Wizard and everything. <laughs> I'm just going to get it all done in one shot. Um, so because this is probably going to turn into quite a long video, I'm going to put some quick links up down the sides here and down the sides here. So if there's stuff that you already know about and you just want to skip through, then you don't have to sit through me waffling. If you don't know any of it, then just sit through and enjoy the whole thing. Um, right, so I'll keep this succinct because we've got a lot to get through. Let's crack on. Okay, so some of the basic principles. Um, if you're mixing stuff that you've mixed before, that you've tried and you've liked, um, chances are you're going to be mixing up some big 30 mil batches, 50 mil, whatever it might be. If you're mixing recipes that you've never tried before, or new concentrates that you've never tried before, then generally you want to be mixing up sort of 3 to 5 mil batches. And then that way, if it all goes wrong, or if you don't like it, then it's no real big waste. The one thing that I would say though, is that making small batches, 3 mil or what have you, are a little bit more tricky than making big batches because it only takes small margins of error to really transform the character of the mix. So that's just one thing to bear in mind. Um, but because of that, when it comes to equipment that you need, I think it's great to have a big variety. Um, here's a picture of some of the stuff that I use. So what have we got? We've got 1 mil and 3 mil measuring pipettes. Um, to be honest, the one mil pipettes are really useful when you're making, um, you know, very small batches. Also got syringes there in varying sizes. One little tip with syringes is that um, some of the ingredients do rub off the, um, you know, rub off the measurement markers quite quickly. So get yourself some uh, some nail varnish, uh, some yeah, some nail varnish, and paint over the top of them, and you'll find that uh, your syringes last a heck of a lot longer. Also on there are some measuring cylinders. I find them really nice, quick and easy when you're doing big batches. Um, and I'll explain what that milk frother is a little bit later. So some of the pluses and negatives of each of those bits of equipment and why, although you don't need all of it, I'd recommend that you have it. The pipettes, I was talking about the one mil ones being um, really good for doing small batches. The only thing that I'd say is a bit of a pain with pipettes is the amount of liquid that still lingers in the tube. So you'll notice that when you get into it, you squeeze an amount out. When you finish squeezing and you leave it resting with it kind of vertical, um, that you do find, yeah, if you leave it resting, then you get more fluid building up at the bottom that hasn't been ejected out. So it can be quite difficult to, you know, to keep it accurate if you're using quite thick liquids, for example. Syringes are fantastic, but depending on the type of bottles that you're pulling stuff out of, they don't always squeeze down that well. And when you're using um, needles on the end so that you can get down into the bottles, generally you find that um, yeah, generally you find it's a lot harder to pull up, especially with some of the thicker liquids again. Measuring cylinders, like I say, they're fantastic when you're doing big batches, but for small batches, perhaps they lack the accuracy that you really need. So that covers the you know the physical stuff. You also need um, an e-liquid mixing calculator. Now there's a lot that are available. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using a Breakthrough's e-juice me up. It's been around for a long time. I love its versatility. I love the fact that you can save all your recipes, but it's not the only one that's available. 
Um, and if you don't have a PC, you're just using a mobile phone, or if you find your mobile phone more handy, then there are e-liquid calculators available on the app stores. Personally, I'm on Android. There's one that's simply called e-liquid calculator. It's got a frog icon, um, and there's a free version and a paid version. The free version you can use, but you can't save your recipes. The paid for one lets you save your recipes. They all work on similar principles, but for the purposes of this one, we'll be focusing on e-juice me up. The other thing that you'll need, of course, is an array of uh, bottles for storing your mixes. And um, I'd also recommend having a jug of water handy for cleaning out your syringes or whatever it might be between your different ingredients. And that's the absolute basics. So, diluents, or dilutants, or however you want to pronounce it, um, there have been a few that have come and gone over the years, but the ones that have stayed, and I'm sure will be around forever, are PG and VG. So let's talk a bit about them. PG stands for propylene glycol. It's used a heck of a lot um, all over the place, really, in soaps and skincare products. It has antiviral and antibacterial properties, and these are actually preserved when you're using it for vaping. Um, so there's no detrimental health effects Although what I will say is that some people do have um, an intolerance to propylene glycol. It's almost like a bit of an allergy. Um, and in fact, when some people switch over to vaping, it's the propylene glycol that, that can cause um, some of the problems. Does that mean it should be avoided? Maybe, maybe not. I think it's probably best to exercise a bit of caution. Um, so why is it still used in vaping? So let's explain some of its properties. Propylene glycol produces pretty much no vapour. It produces a tiny amount, and when you breathe it out, it disappears from the atmosphere in no time. Um, it, what it does do, though, is it provides a heck of a good thump of uh, throat hit. So if you're using low nicotine mixes, for example, you might want to boost your propylene glycol content just to give you a bit more of the throat hit that you might feel is lacking because there's no nicotine in there. Um, the other thing is that it's very flavour neutral and it's, it has a certain brightness. It brings a real brightness out in your flavours. So with tobaccos, for example, it works really well with tobaccos. Um, fruit flavours, it really helps to elevate and bring out some of the high notes that are in there. Um, so you generally, for, for flavour, um, yeah, for flavour I'd say predominantly and for throat hit, most people will want at least some PG in their mixes. The other ingredient is vegetable glycerin, um, which is also called VG. Vegetable glycerin, again, has been around for a long time. Um, you get it from places like Boots, just called glycerin, and people have it when they have sore throats. And it's been used for pff, centuries in smoke machines and theatrical productions and the like. No negative health effects, yes, again, from vegetable glycerin. Um, it's almost the antithesis to PG in its properties, so it has pretty much no throat hit. You don't really get any throat hit at all off it. In term, rather than being flavour neutral, it has a certain sweetness to it and a mellowness as well. So when you're using quite intense flavours or what have you, it does mellow them out a little bit. Um, but one area where that really does work well is if you're mixing uh, bakery type flavours or custards or what have you, then generally a good amount of VG just helps to kind of bring out that buttery smoothness that you might expect from your liquids. Um, huge clouds of vapour. Huge, huge clouds from vegetable glycerin. Um, whenever you see uh, videos of people blowing out huge clouds, if it's not because they're running seriously low resistances, it's generally because you've got a big vegetable glycerin content in the overall mix. Um, and as a result, the VG really does linger in the air a lot more. It takes a lot longer for the vapour to clear. The only other thing to say about the two of them is that there's all sorts of different grades that are available. So depending on where you're shopping it for it and where you're looking to get it, um, you must make sure that you are using pharmaceutical grade, not beauty grade, not food grade. Um, they have a lot more contaminants in there, and though it might be good enough to eat, it's certainly not healthy enough to be putting in your lungs. So wherever you're sourcing it from, you must make sure that it is pharmaceutical grade. The other term that you might come across is called AG. Now AG stands for aqueous glycerin. 
and it's nothing more than vegetable glycerin that's been thinned slightly with a little bit of uh, deionized water I believe it's called um, so yeah the reason why people use deionized water is because um, it's been well and truly filtered you've not got any contaminants in there and even tap water which might seem okay you've got to remember if you make a batch of e-liquid and you leave it standing for six months then any bacteria that's in that water is going to contaminate and grow and fester in your overall mix so distilled or deionized water is generally what's used um, and the general proportion is about 15 percent water compared to the vegetable glycerin concentrate so when you see 15% distilled water with VG, it's purely talking in terms of the VG concentration, not your overall mix. Don't know why I'm doing strange hand signals here. Um, so yeah, if you see aqueous glycerin, then it's vegetable glycerin that's been pre-thinned with water. Now the other thing that people thin VG with is alcohol. You find people using high concentration grain alcohols like Everclear for example um, and there's a bit of a mixed reception to them they do add a little bit more throat hit to the mix but depending on what type of vati you're using depending on how well built it is there is a bit of a worry that um, the alcohol will kind of break down solvents might break down components inside of your e-cigarette so use at your discretion if you want to try it, play with it, do but I'd say that really you should save using alcohol for if you're already at the stage where you're using um, rebuildable drippers, rebuildable latches of any type. Uh, I certainly wouldn't go taking the risk with CE4, CE5 or cheap Chinese plastic devices. Um, there you go. So nicotine base. Um, why am I doing a section on that? A um, few things to say. First of all is that um, you get them in a variety of concentrations. So you can get, I mean, the most common ones are 36, 54, and 72 milligram. Um, now, I know that in the States you can get higher concentrations, but here in Europe, 72 milligram seems to be about as high as you can go. Now, the higher concentrations do cost a little bit more than the lower ones. But obviously, the higher the concentration, the less you need to use overall in your mix. Nicotine itself has got no flavor. It does, however, carry quite a lot of throat hit. Um, and that's pretty much all I can say about the properties. The other thing to say about nicotine base is it's the one way you need to exercise the most caution when you're mixing. Number one, making sure that you know the quantities that you're putting in are right. And number two, dealing with any spillages you might have in as sensible a way as possible. So if you're mixing and you get some on your finger I mean if it's a couple of drops it's probably not going to do you any harm but if you have a, a coverage say that's covering that much of the tip of one of your fingers or over this side of the palm of your hand it might not seem that you've got a lot on you but believe me if you don't wash that off straight away it's only going to be a matter of time before you're scraping yourself off the ceiling um, so just exercise some caution really exercise some caution um, I think that's really all I need to say about nicotine base. The exciting bit, but it's the exciting bit for you and sadly not for the video, and it's flavours. Um, and it's exciting because there are just so many to choose from, and so many really good ones to choose from as well. Um, I'm not going to go into any detail about any of the particular flavours you can get. Um, feel like a kid in a sweet shop, go wild, get loads of stuff. Um, so I'm just going to tell you who manufactures them, who the best ones come from. Um, sorry if I miss any. I will put up some notes and some annotations if people say, you forgot this one. Um, but my favourites, my top two, are the Perfumer's Apprentice, um, who are sometimes called the Flavorer's Apprentice, and uh, Flavor Art. For me, they manufacture the best of the, um, the sweet flavours, they also make additives, which I'm going to talk about shortly. Um, generally, I find that their flavours are pretty spot on. Next, you've got Loran. Um, Loran, I've got to say, I've never used any of their stuff before, but their flavours tend to be a lot more concentrated than, um, than a lot of the others that you buy. So although you are paying more for smaller, smaller quantities, with Loran flavours, the, um, you know, they do go a lot further 
so don't be put off by that and in fact I'm making a note to myself I really must check out some of their stuff um, mums and pops or mamas and poppers um, again they make some really good flavours I've been told that their tobacco flavours are sublime and I've just started getting into my tobacco flavours again recently so I'm going to start checking them out Flavour West people have been making a good noise about as well um, I haven't tried them personally but give it a go um, Totally Wicked I know that I'm not going to say anything about anything to do with Totally Wicked but I really like their gold standard concentrates not all of them, some of them are terrible but they do make some good ones and finally I think this is more of a European thing than a stateside thing there's another company called Cupcake World I think most of the stuff that I've talked about here is more applicable to the European market than the US I'm sure in the US you've got other producers as well I think Flavor Mist is one of them I'm not so up on them so I'm not going to talk about those very much at all um, Cupcake World flavors I've tried a few and the one thing that I would say is that they don't seem to have quite as high a flavor concentration as say uh, the Flavor's Apprentice so give them a go I think the flavors aren't too bad but although they might look quite cheap and cost effective by the time you start working out how much of that you actually need to put into your mix I don't think it really works out much cheaper than any of the others but the flavors are very good they're just not particularly strong um, so what flavor strength do you need to mix at this is such a contentious area and whatever I say now is going to be wrong um, some people generally like their flavors quite weak and you find that people mix it sort of five to eight percent other people like me are flavor whores and so I'm generally looking at twenty percent of my overall mix being made up of the flavoring um, that's not always the case with tobacco flavors for example as I'm starting to discover less is sometimes more um, and this is one of the reasons why you want to start off with small batches because you can test it you can see whether you want more or less and then it's easier to scale that up and keep your nicotine concentration and everything else rather than making a batch and then adding flavor to it but actually diluting your nicotine content and knocking out the PG and VG ratio along the way as well um, I think a good starting point with most flavors is 10% that way if it's too strong it doesn't take much to dilute it down to 5% and again you don't have to waste too much fluid if you do need to dilute it and find out that perhaps you diluted it a bit too far um, and again conversely it's easier to knock it up to 15% um, so 10% I think is a really good starting point additives almost as exciting as flavors um, but you need to exercise real caution with these because little bits generally go a long way so let's start with the top then and talk about sweetening your mixes if you find that your concentrate isn't quite sweet enough for you and I find that generally it's a lot of people with custards that like a little bit more sweetness but it's all about finding tastes that work for you um, so sweeteners you've got ethyl maltol or you've got stevia now the reason people use those as opposed to real sugars is because they do not clog up your coils you cannot just take granular sugar, caster sugar, whatever it might be and chuck it in your bottle because although yes it will vape sweeter um, it will also leave deposits on your coils and it doesn't take much time at all for those deposits to really build up um, so avoid any real sugars you want ethyl maltol or you want stevia um, both of which you can get in liquid form sourness um, Loran do one called tart and sour um, and as, it, as, as the name suggests um, if you get I mean strawberry flavors cherry flavors um, and apple flavors generally when you buy them in the concentrate form um, and maybe as I just haven't discovered the right one yet but they're the ones that you have a real tendency for them to be quite candy-esque in tone and just by adding a little bit of sour to the mix you can make that candy flavor seem ever so much more natural so Loran tart and sour bitterness uh, flavor arts do one called bitter wizard and it's normally good for dark or for tobacco flavors and as you might expect it removes a bit of the natural sweetness adds a little bit more bitterness 
um, and brings out a lot of the body. I think that you can get stout bitter flavours as well um, and depending on how dark a stout you're getting from it a little bit of bitter wizard again might just bring that little bit more reality into it. Throat hit. Now we've already talked about how you can create a controlled throat hit to a certain extent through the amount of nicotine in the mix and also the amount of propylene glycol but it might be that you've got a preference for your PG content um, and let's say for example you've gone over to vaping because you've wanted to quit smoking and you want to cut down on your dependence on nicotine well the first thing that you notice when you start dropping down those nicotine concentrations is that the throat hit really disappears from the mix and I'll tell you what you'll be amazed at how much you miss it um, and for this one you use in the UK it's called Bite Extra in the States I believe it's called Flash but it's made by Flavor Art um, and yet again with all of these that I'm talking about little bits really do go a long way and you probably want to be a maximum of 1% or 2% as part of your overall mix with all of these you're better off adding a couple of drops and seeing what impact it has than going in with a full 1 or 2% and finding that you've gone too far um, menthol of course people love their menthol flavours and you can either buy menthol crystals and dissolve them yourself in PG or you can just get ready mixed menthol concentrates um, and again it doesn't take a lot to really add a real freshness to the vape um, menthol works really well with orange flavours actually works quite well with cherry and strawberry believe it or not um, but with tobaccos if it's your thing it can be an absolute winner um, another couple that are worthy of mention are MTS Vape Wizard which stands for mellow, thick and smooth and that's made again by Flavor Art and as you might expect from the name um, it mellows out a mix um, if you've got kind of weird notes that seem a little bit off then it just kind of balances it out if you think of graphic equalizer it just kind of makes everything go quite flat um, thickness, it doesn't change the vapour production at all it's just about the texture on your tongue and the texture that you get at the back of the throat and of course it smooths out the flavours and smooths out the mix as well um, I found that although people say 1 or 2% just 2 or 3 drops in a 30ml bottle can make a really huge difference so again it's worth having in the arsenal it's worth experimenting with but just really exercise caution with all of these the final one I'm going to mention is Magic Mask. If you've got citrusy type flavours and you find that there's too much of a citrus tang or if you vape on it for a while and it gives you heartburn it's because of um, your taste receptors acid perception. Now Magic Mask reduces the acid perception that you have in an e-liquid. It doesn't change the natural pH of it in any way but it can remove a little bit of the sour tang that you might get with sour flavours um, and if it is too acidic and it leaves you a bad kind of texture on your tongue then again just a little bit of magic mask can go a long way these things um, they're not essential if you're new to all of this you can get away without having them but if you've been mixing for a while or if you've got a particular premix that you like and you buy a concentrate for and it's not quite the same as the premix that you were buying chances are it's because in the premix they're using any one of these ingredients and just experimenting with them a little bit um, and keeping one that you like or a premix next to your batches um, is a good way of just making sure where you are the other thing I'd say with using these additives is let's say that you're experimenting trying to get a flavor as best as it possibly can be and you've made a 5ml batch don't just add the additive to the 5ml batch take it out decant some into another bottle and keep your original one marked and that will always be your benchmark and so when you compare what an additive's done against the original and you've always got the original to compare to you can see exactly what characteristics each of these additives is having with the overall vape um, they can be really handy they can be quite dangerous if you don't know what you're doing or if you're a bit impatient or if you use a bit too much so perhaps I'd say this is more for your intermediate to advanced mixers as opposed to something that every newbie should jump into with both feet. Hooray! We're now done with theory. Um, so this is where all of this information comes together and we can start putting it into practice. So, nicotine strength e-juice. 
This is obviously your base nicotine fluid. One thing I will say with the e-juice me up calculator is if you're not sure what any of these things do, put a mouse cursor over the box and a tooltip will tell you what information it's expecting. So I'm using 100% PG base and my base strength is 54 milligrams. My target strength is 18 milligrams. Um, and given that I'm going to make a mix that I've never made before, I'm going to do 5 mil. Um, okay, water and vodka. I'm using AG already, so I don't need to worry about that at all. Now we're going to talk about uh, what flavors we're going to put in. Now this is a recipe I'm going to adapt from something that I had suggested on the forum. Um, I'm going to add the flavor as apprentice. hazelnut praline. Um, now, if you remember what I said earlier, generally I like my flavours at about 20% overall strength. Given that I'm making a cocktail here, um, this is going to be a lesser part of my mix, so I'm going to go with that at 9%. I'm then going to use flavour art, or as it's sometimes abbreviated, so if you see fast on the forum, it's not necessarily rude. Anyway, moving on. Um, so flavor art chocolate. So as you can guess from this particular recipe, I'm going for a Belgian luxury chocolate or a Gillian seashell chocolate type flavor. And this I'm going to make 11% of the overall mix. Um, now, unless otherwise stated, almost all concentrates come in 100% PG solution. So it's very rare that you'll need to do anything to adjust these figures but you have got the option if it's needed. Also, you've got here a row of tick boxes and it says there, flavor zero PG and VG. Um, now that exists for um, flavor solids, which you can sometimes get. Generally you find them coming out from China and they're not really any good yet. So I can't really imagine for most people you'd see the need to be ticking these, but the option is there if you need it. Um, drops per mil. I'm just going to say I'm always really dubious about these figures because all of the bottles that you get, if you're going to use the droppers they've got in them, they will dispense different sized drops. So if you are going to go by drops and make, say, a mill, then make sure that you're using the same dropper right the way throughout. Um, I'm not going to worry about that at all. Now, if you want to, you can make some notes on this recipe. I'm not going to bother yet. And here, if you remember what I said earlier, I'm generally mixing 50-50 PG and VG. So this is exactly what I'm after. Now, what's really important to know is that none of these figures, none of these really important figures will change until you press this calculate button. Okay, now I've just got this error come on my screen. Um, at 50-50, I've got too much PG going into this. So I have a couple of ways that I can deal with that. Either I can just look at that figure and say, well, I'm just going to add uh, 0.17 to my um, VG intake, so that now becomes 2.67. Or if I want to work out how much that changes the balance, I can come over here and adjust the percentages. So I'm going to try 54% um, should even it out. Let's recalculate. And I'm now within the parameters of the program. 0.03 is such a minuscule amount. For me, I think it's fair to say that I'm not going to add any PG to this mix at all. So now I've got my figures. So all of that theory boils down to this. Now, this is an experimental batch, but I want to remember what I'm exper experimenting with. So I'll come up here. I'm going to save. And now I get the chance to um, to save my recipe. Now with the eJuice Me Up software, you already get a list of suggested recipes. Um, and there's some pretty cool ones in there. I've got to say I've tried a couple and they're really quite nice. Um, so you can either save into the default directory or you can create your own. I'm not going to tell you how to use a computer. You know how to save files. There you go. That's eJuice Me Up. That's how you take all of that theory and put it into practice. Um, so now I'm going to do a mix. I'm probably going to speed this up because there's nothing that exciting about what I'm going to be doing right now.
Okay, so what I've got here is I've got a glass of water for rinsing my pipettes between ingredients. I'm going to mix into this glass and I'm going to explain later why I'm mixing into a glass. Um, if you're a seasoned mixer, I think you're going to like what's coming up next. Um, and here I've got my chocolate flavour, my praline flavour, um, what little I've got left in this bottle of my nicotine fluid, and here's the aqueous glycerin. As you could gather from the e-liquid calculator earlier, I'm not going to bother with a PG. Um, right, and I'm now going to speed this whole process up, but not before picking up my recipe. It almost never goes right when you're doing things on cam and uh, as you could see I couldn't get the top off this chocolate bottle. I've never had a bottle with a top like this on before, normally they just screw off but I couldn't get the top off for love nor money so I just estimated the amount that I needed there. Um, like I say I've been doing this long enough so I can, got a general idea of proportions so that was I hope close to what I was after. Um, but next we're on the, you know, the important bit this is the mixture that we were left with um, and I'm going to talk about steeping now generally when people steep they tend to just give the bottle a shake uh, leave the top off it, put it in a cupboard and even leaving the top off it is you know some people choose not to do that if they're really purist about it and normally you leave uh, an e-liquid once it's been mixed depending on the flavour to steep for anywhere from a few days to a few weeks Bakery flavours and the custards especially really benefit from a 21 day steep time and tobacco flavours as well generally if you can leave them without touching them for 21 days you're generally getting the best out of them. But that's far too long to wait for most people especially if it's your first few mixes. So now this is going to be sacrilege and fingernails down a blackboard to some experienced mixers but I can honestly say do not knock it until you've tried it. I couldn't find any information anywhere of people that had tried using mixers and stuff with uh, with their steeping. And so I mixed up a batch of custard and I thought I'm going to throw this in the food processor and see what happens. And I put 30ml in and the blades didn't quite come up to the liquid. Anyway, long story short, I had to check about 100ml in so I was quite worried because if it didn't work then I was in trouble. And I pushed the button on the whizzer and the liquid went cloudy and I thought what have I done? Um, but I left it to settle and it was just air bubbles that had built up. And what I found is that by whizzing a mix, um, it reduced, like I say, typical steep time for custard, 21 days. And this method reduced it from a 21 day steep to a fully matured flavour in, I kid you not, three to four days. Now, um, I don't know why it works. I've got a theory. PG bonds to PG, VG bonds to VG, flavors bond to different flavors all the liquids have different viscosities and trying to get them to form new bonds with the other substances as part of the mix takes a bit of time whizzing it um, forces all of those natural kind of bondings to to cease and everything rebonds with its nearest neighboring molecule that's one part of what i think is going on the other thing as well is like i said when some people steep they leave it exposed to the air and so exposure to air i think also helps mature a mix so this does both this forms um, neighbors to build new bonds with their next door neighbors as opposed to pg to pg and it also whizzes loads of mix into there uh, whizzes loads of air into the mix so here we go
And really, the, the more the more speed time that's required, the more of this I'd recommend. Um, it never spits all over the place. It's typical, yet again, that it would do it when I've got the camera running. I normally give this just one more whiz in the glass just to make sure I'm getting everything off there and not wasting any liquid. But as you can see, this has now gone like um, a milky type consistency. And what I'll do is I will leave that to clear. As soon as it's cleared, I'll whiz it again. And I've been doing that three times. So, you know, let it go milky, wait for it to clear, whiz it till it goes milky, wait for it to clear, whiz it till it goes mixy, uh, till it goes milky, decant into a bottle. And um, like I say, I kid you not, this reduces three weeks steep times into three days. It really works. Try it. If you don't like it, fine. But I can guarantee you for 80-90% of the people that make DIY mixes out there, this, this tip, milk frother, is an absolute lifesaver. Do it. Um, I think that's everything covered. I can't think of anything that I've missed out. Um, if there's stuff that I've excluded, if there's stuff that you want more explanation of, then please comment on the video. Maybe I'll do a version two. Um, yeah, I hope that's been useful. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Cheers. Bye-bye.